So welcome back to the third lecture. This is the second part. We are going to talk about expectation values and variances. So what is an expectation value of a random variable? So um, if you have a random variable, you know, and you, let's say we've got a die and we roll it many, many times, then yeah, what's the expected kind of average mean result you get. So expectation value has to be uh, something that's like something like the mean value in data sets and we're gonna see the mean value of a sample kind of converges towards the expectation value if you ha have a really large sample. So that's kind of our best guess. Um, how do we calculate what is kind of the average result of my random variable? Yeah, x is always my random variable. Um, oh, by the way, this is often also called mu, yeah, Greek symbol. Um, whenever you see a mu, uh, that means the expectation value yeah, of your random variable. How do we calculate it? Well, we take the outcomes, yeah, AJs, one, two, three, four, five, six, four dice, for example. So, for example, the six for outcome six on the dice, and then you multiply it with the probability that corresponds to it. So, if a six has a 10% chance, then you multiply it by 0.1. And then you add this up for all the outcomes and you've got your expectation value. Yeah, this is for discrete, um, for continuous, same formula, uh, except that, yeah, we've got an integral over the product of x times f, on the f of x. So same formula, just continuous way of summing up. Um, one interesting thing I'd like to add is what is the case if we don't have x but a function of x. We're going to use that a lot in the next little bit. So let's say we've got the dice outcomes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 but we're not interested in the expectation value of that but you know something that we do to it, like let's say we square the number that comes out or we multiply it with a constant or we do something else to it. And the interesting thing is, I don't want to show you the proof, is that if you want to calculate the expectation value of y, kind of a function applied to our random variable, that only comes through here. So we only need to adjust the outcomes it turns into g of a j yeah, we apply the function to the outcomes and and just do the same thing as above here yeah? multiply with the probability sum over it or take the integral continuous ones so not a big change and we're gonna be able to uh, calculate interesting things with this all right but this would be Enough for a start. Your turn. So <clears throat> let's have an example. So I've got a coin. Outcomes heads is one, tails is zero. And I've got probabilities 14, 60 percent respectively. And what is the expectation value of this? Perfect, yeah. 0 0.4 is my expectation value. How can we see this? Um, so heads was associated with one. This is this, this one here, yeah. Heads, and here I've got tails. <clears throat> and then I multiply them each with the probabilities. So heads had a 40% chance and tails had a 60% chance. And then, yeah, 
just add it up and the result is 0.4. Brilliant. Let's try another example, a bit more complicated. Now it's a die, six outcomes, and those are the probabilities. And you can see the six is very likely with 50%. So what is the expectation value of this random variable, e of x? And when you've done this, try to calculate the expectation value of x squared. All finished? Perfect. So e of x, just as we've done it before, um, I take h a times the probability. So Basically, in this table, I multiply those ones with each other all the way down. So the first one is 0 0.1, then I get 2, point, 2 times 0 0.1 is 0 0.2, and so on. Last couple is 6 times 0 0.5, that's the 3, add up to 4.5. So 4.5 is our expectation value. In a fair die, it would be 3.5. So we see considerably skewed. So what about expectation value of x squared? <clears throat> well, we know that this to the power of 2, the squaring, that just applies to the aj's. So we just need to square the outcomes. Um, I can write it at the top. So 1 squared is a 1, and 4, 9, 16, 25, 36. This is aj squared. And now I can do the same thing, like this times 0 0.1 is 0 0.1. 4 times 0 0.1 is 0 0.4, and so on. And the last couple is 0 0.5 times 36 is 18. Add them all up, you can use a calculator and it's 23.5. And we're going to see in a minute that, you know, this is part of the calculation for the variance. So we're going to need this calculation again. Good. Last example. So that was just applying a pretty much random function, the squaring to it. Now let's put all together let's create a little game so you've got two dice and if you roll um if both dice show the same number if you roll two fours for example then you get a euro for each black dot so in this case you would get eight euros cash in your hand if it's not two of the same kind you have to pay one euro to the bank. And now the question, is it a fair game? Who's going to win it on average? What do you expect to happen? So, yeah, we need the expectation value. And I've shown you, like, four possible results. Please calculate what you think is the outcome. Exactly, 12 over 36. Um, how do we, how do we get this result? So, I basically apply this money function to my outcomes. So, uh, we've got 36 outcomes. And six of those are the pairs yeah the one one two two and so on up to six six and the other ones the other 30 outcomes are mixed outcomes of all kinds so for all the like each outcome has a probability of 1 over 36. So that makes it a bit easier. The probability of one outcome is 
always 1 over 36. So 30 times 1 over 36, I need to multiply with the money function. And the money function says I have to give 1 euro to the bank. So this is lose 1 euro. Yeah, lose 1 euro. And this happens in with probability 30 over 36. Yeah, corresponding to the 30 mixed results. Um, for the pairs, I get as many euros as black dots I see. Um, but each time the probability is only 1 over 36, they get two, two ones, for example, and there are two black dots. So this is again the I win two euros and with a chance of 1 over 36. And with a um, two sixes, I win 12 euros. But the chance is also 1 over 36. So that all adds up. And the result is something like 12 over 36. Meaning you can expect winning yeah, something like 30 cent per round of game. So pretty good for you, I guess. Perfect. So we can calculate interesting things. Now, how does that help us when we talk about variance? As we saw that, you know, expectation value alone doesn't mean everything. Like we still need to know how wide is the distribution. And we can use variance for that. The variance, um, we can express that. That's basically the expectation value of how far is your random variable away from the mean value and that distance gets squared. Um, you can expand that and the result of this is expectation value of x squared minus mean value. That is basically a nice neat formula that calculates us variance. So you see we can use this e of x squared from earlier. Um, if yeah, if you don't want to use the expectation value, um, you can also like calculate it from like first principles again. So you take the outcome a j minus the mean value, and then yeah, you square the difference and multiply it with the probability of that outcome and then sum it over all outcomes. So similar formula to the expectation value just you've got this difference here at the squared. Um, in the continuous case kind of same formula just the integral instead of the sum and obviously standard deviation is just square root of the variance. Okay, let's see how that works out. So, again, we've got our coins. Outcomes 1 and 0, probabilities 14, 60% from earlier. And what is the variance? Perfect. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> so we know the expectation value is 0.4 so we need this here yeah, this is our expectation value 0.4 so we calculate the difference of our outcomes so outcomes are 1 and 0 so 1 minus 0.4 squared and 0 minus 0.4 squared and we multiply them with the respective probabilities with 40% for this outcome and 60% for this outcome. <coughs> Use your calculate and outcomes 0.24. That's the variance. Brilliant. Let's try again like earlier. Same data table. What is the variance of this random variable?
perfect. Yep, we get 3.25. Um, what I've done, I've, I've just calculated it from like first principles, like put all the numbers into the formula. The mean value is 3.5. Um, <clears throat> that's one way of doing it. Um, what we also could have done is um, maybe you, if you scroll back up a little bit, we calculated earlier e of x squared. And if I just look that number up, we found out that's 23.5. So we've learned earlier that the variance is also e of x squared minus mu squared. So that's the 23.5 from here minus mu is this one minus 4.5 squared. And if you calculate that, you're also going to end up with 3.25. So that might be the faster way to calculate this. And obviously, once we have this, take the square root, and that's the standard deviation. Good. So now we know how to calculate expectation values and variance of random variables. Now we're going to use that to go one step further in the next part of this lecture and standardize and transform random variables. See you in a sec.